effort to make school meals healthier for children. The USDA is setting new guidelines for school nutrition standards. They include offering 1% milk in addition to other non-fat and low-fat options. At least 80% of grains in school breakfasts and lunches per week must be whole grain rich. And there will be a 10% decrease in the weekly sodium limit for school lunches. The new standards are set to go into effect over the next two years. The USDA also said more long-term nutrition standards are expected to be established for 2024 to 2025. All right, big news here locally. Parents can now enroll their young children in pre-K for SA. The enrollment is open for the pre-kindergarten program for any child in San Antonio that is four years old on or before September 1st. The application process is on first come, first serve basis. If you're interested in applying, you can do so online or by calling the enrollment hotline 210-206-PREK. There you go. Pre-K. Pre-K for SA. Mm -hmm. All right, Sarah, um, you have a nifty graphic up there, a comparison yeah. from, I think we all kind of have PTSD from February's winter storm and we for comparing what was happening from this last year. A lot of um, yeah, from yeah. February of 2021. Anxiety from yeah. last year because yeah. it was really bad across the it state. It was awful. Uh, but, you know, last week's event was fairly normal for an ice event around San Antonio. We usually get them every other year or so. But let's compare. Let's get down to the numbers. So last year in February, we were below freezing for four and a half days. Last week, only a little bit more than a day, only 26 hours. And as far as precipitation goes, you know, last year we had crippling ice and snow across the entire state of Texas. While last week here in San Antonio, we had light ice accumulation in San Antonio, maximum of up to about a quarter of an inch. Of course, it was a little bit worse up in Kerrville and in the hill country. And then finally, last year's cold, we got down to nine degrees with a wind chill of eight, uh, eight below. And then last week, we got down to 21 degrees with a wind chill of 10. So that's about a 20 degree difference, 10 to 20 degree difference. In comparison, that would be like a 75 degree day versus a 90 degree day. So last year's cold was much colder, much more intense than last week. Uh, and good news is I don't see any kind of ice in our forecast anytime soon. So outside right now, it is 28 degrees. The only kind of ice that might be out there, are some puddles that have frozen and uh, some frost, but no problems on the roads and wind chills are chilly out there. So wear the scarf like I am and bundle up uh, winds from the west northwest at about five miles per hour, making it feel like it's in the low 20s out there this morning. Elsewhere, it is in the low 20s, like in Holotus, 23 in Rio Medina, 30 at Stinson, 26 at JBSA Randolph, 27 in New Braunfels, 25 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 27 in Kerrville. You know, temperatures while cold, about five degrees warmer than yesterday's start. 30 in Rock Springs, 28 in Uvalde. It's actually above freezing right now this morning in Del Rio and 32 in Catula. Temperatures may go down another degree or two before we see the sunrise, but that's all we're going to have today, sunshine. And so it really is going to end up a beautiful day, especially after the mid-morning hours. We'll be looking at high temperatures close to 60 degrees around San Antonio, mid-60s out toward Del Rio, 66 for the high, 62 for the high in Uvalde. Uh, mid 50s for the hill country, 55 in Kerrville, 57 New Braunfels, but again, close to 60 degrees here in San Antonio. How quickly will we warm up? We're in the 20s now, but by 10, we'll be at 45 degrees. By noon, we'll be in the 50s. And as I said, afternoon high temperature close to 60 degrees. Once the sun sets tonight at about 616, it's going to get cold again. We'll be seeing temperatures fall into the low 40s by midnight. South winds at five miles per hour. All right, tomorrow morning, morning. I do think that we'll have a freeze in the hill country and in some spots out west. So Kerrville, Rock Springs, uh, Canyon Lake and up toward uh, Bernie, there probably is going to be a light freeze tomorrow morning, but a big improvement from this morning and yesterday morning. Meanwhile, around San Antonio, likely going to be just above freezing tomorrow morning. So uh, if, if we do have a freeze around the Alamo City, it is going to be a light freeze. And then looking ahead, we're going to warm up. Look at these afternoon temperatures in the week ahead. Absolutely gorgeous. Our average high is 66 and we'll be back to average and above average by Wednesday. Unfortunately, though, with the beautiful weather comes a almost 
almost complete lack of rainfall for much of the state of Texas. And honestly, in the week ahead, it's going to be quiet for a good portion of the United States. So again, a quiet but a beautiful uh, second week of February here. Hey, by Saturday, that'll be about a year since the winter storm. And on Saturday, we'll be at 70 degrees. So. Nice. Yeah. I'm ready for 60s and sunny. Me too. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 29 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Big matchup yesterday afternoon at Northside Sports Gym. Brennan taking on O'Connor. Panthers in control late in the third quarter. Let's roll the highlight. Jalen Munoz kicking it to Joshua Moreno. Quarter three. That is good. O'Connor leads 46-38, but the Bears roar back. Camden Cowgill. Catch and fire from beyond the arc, knocking down two threes. Brennan cutting down the lead to two, heading into the fourth quarter. Both teams trading buckets. Regulation not enough to settle this one. Both teams tied to 57, so we go to OT. Munoz driving straight to the hoop. Bang, he had a game-high 27 points. Look at that beautiful cross-court pass. Jacob Peebles, that is a dagger three. Hand in his face, Panthers stunning the Bears 71-63 in overtime. We were trying to be as physical as we can with them, especially because, you know, we're definitely undersized. We don't really have that many bigs, but I'm proud of the way we fought. Me and the team and the coaches, we all fought on defense hard, and we were able to get the stops we needed, and then we were able to get the clutch buckets in the end, and free throws. Free throws definitely a key part of the game that helped us win this game. Panthers back in action Wednesday night, taking on Stevens. Tip-off at Paul Taylor Fieldhouse, set for 7.30 p.m. Next up, we have Holmes taking on Harlan, the Huskies. Jumping out to an early lead. Christopher Medella is taking a step and hits it right to the rim. Scoop and layup. 5-0 Holmes, but here comes the Hawks. Kalen Hargrove a knife in his way. Inside layup, cutting the lead to three. Huskies have an answer. He is back, whipping it over to Jay Sibley. Pull up, Jay. Holmes stunned the Hawks. 52-49, winning just their second win in district play. Don't worry. A lot of sports coming up in a little bit later in the show. We were talking college hoops, a couple of UTSA players making history yesterday. So you got to stick around for that. We're talking about the Senior Bowl. I actually got to watch that yesterday afternoon. We love to see that. Love to see it. Some homegrown talent. All right, 621, 29 degrees out. We'll be right back. All right, we were just talking about this. If you are looking for a gig for the Super Bowl, we have some ideas here. The Game Day, an online entertainment network that focuses on sports betting, is looking for someone to watch the game in detail. Everything that takes place from the game itself to the halftime show to the commercials. The Super Bowl analysts could earn up to $2,022 by answering questions throughout the... I think I can do this, Max. Get it, because it's 2022. Yeah, got it. Each correct answer pays around $135. Okay. Applicants must be 21 years old and a U.S. citizen. I might... Wait, I does might that mean... Does that, that go for, like, plays and stuff? Because I don't know if I can do that. I think you can figure it out. I mean, for that we'll see, for money, I mean, yes. <laughs> $135 a question, you might as well shoot I your shot. I get motivated. Uh, do you use Peloton? No, 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 no. So... Big news this weekend, Peloton could be rolling towards a new era. According to the Wall Street Journal, Amazon has made contact with Peloton mm. about a possible deal. Meanwhile, the Financial Times reports that Nike also considering a potential bid. No official comment from Peloton, Nike, or Amazon about the situation. The original Peloton bike sells for more than $1,700, including shipping. I a lot. I know a lot of people that use it though, and they're like, "It's the best thing ever." Yeah, I don't want to get into the details, but this all kind of circular around, around their uh, their stock share. Because mm -hmm. at one point during the pandemic, they were really up, and recently, because of their forecast, it went really down. They're playing the music, so we got to go. But it's a really but interesting. There was article. also the Sex in the City thing with Peloton right. drama, and then right. billions too. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but 626, 29 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, Valentine's Day is coming up, and the FBI is warning against romance scams what you should know so you don't fall victim. Plus a shooting at a gas station overnight on the southeast side. Why police believe a man was targeted as he was changing a flat tire. We're going to explain when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. It is 630 this morning, February 6th. Thank you so much for joining us. Starting off in the 20s again. 29. Oof. And you know what? Um, I covered all of my plants. Mm -hmm on Wednesday. I had to think about that one. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a, minute, a while. You know? And I went, I, I peeped over and I checked them. How they doing? And they're still alive. That's awesome. But 
um, I need to take them off so they can get some sun, Sarah, so I can probably do that later today. Yeah, absolutely. But tomorrow morning, in fact, Sarah, we're not expecting a freeze in inside the city itself. So okay. plants should be good. Uh, but I was walking along the river walk yesterday and a lot of those plants are are gone. They'll come back if, if they can come back after the winter freeze last year, they can come back after this typical freeze that we've been seeing here in San Antonio, but it is a lot colder than seasonably average this morning. We are at, in the 20s this morning. It's 28 degrees at the airport. It's 21 in Lotus, 23 in Bulverde, 25 Bernie stage, 21 in Comfort and 24 in Kerrville. You know, the sun is going to rise here shortly and temperatures may drop just a degree or so before we see the sunrise. Uh, it's 30 in Lost Maples. Today calls for sunshine much like yesterday, but today Today we're going to be even warmer. We're quickly going to warm up. We're in the 20s now, but by 10 we'll already be in the 40s. So a big 20 degree jump just in a couple of hours. Uh, and then looking at noon, we'll be at 53 degrees. Maybe a little chilly for Sunday brunch outdoors, but it's still going to be really gorgeous with uh, plenty of sunshine, a high temperature near 60 degrees. All right, what are we going to talk about in the forecast? Well, of course, we'll talk about the quick warm up today. And as I just mentioned earlier, we are going to have chilly mornings, but warmer mornings over the next few days. A freeze here or there, but uh, not a hard freeze like we're seeing out there right now. And, and a dry forecast this week. When can we expect our last freeze usually? Well, I'll have a look at that and of course all of these details in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect they believe that was involved in a southeast side shooting. Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Do we know what led up to the shooting and do we know if anyone was hurt? Good morning, Max. Well, we do know one man was shot. He was taken to the hospital. Information is limited and it's still unclear why or what happened this morning, but this is what we know right now. It was just after three o'clock this morning when the driver of this vehicle um, came up to uh, this Circle K with his girlfriend on WW White and East South Cross. That's near Southeast Loop 410. The driver was trying to fix a flat tire and what came next was completely unexpected. Police say the driver's girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, walked up on him and shot him twice. The suspect left the scene in a beige four-door vehicle and police are continuing to search for him. Max Sarah, it's still unclear exactly why the ex-boyfriend uh, shot the driver of that car right now, but the, the, the girlfriend is being uh, questioned at this time. As for the victim, he was taken to Bamsey. We have learned that he is expected to be okay. This case remains under investigation. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, we've learned the name of the father shot and killed Friday evening after dropping his child with his mother. He was 20 year old Lizar Brown Dunnigan. The shooting happened on the south side near South Flores Street and East Sayers Avenue. According to police, the man accused of shooting him was the woman's new boyfriend. It happened after the two men got into an argument. At last check, police were still searching for the suspect and no arrests have been made. Your morning headlines trial date has been set in a federal lawsuit against Los Angeles County and this lawsuit brought on by Kobe Bryant's widow Vanessa Bryant. It was originally set to start February 22nd, but the trial was pushed back to July 26th. Bryant is suing Los Angeles County over photos that were taken at the scene of the 2020 helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant, their daughter and seven others. The suit alleges that photos from the scene were shared by county fire and sheriff's department employees in settings that were not relevant to the investigation. The lawyers for Los Angeles County said taking photos is standard procedure, but acknowledged that others showed the pictures at places that were not related to the investigation. The CEO of Delta Airlines is asking the Justice Department to create a no fly list for passengers convicted of unruly behavior. In a letter to the attorney general, he praised the department for increasing prosecution of such travelers. He asked the department to ban passengers from flying on commercial carriers if they're convicted of illegal behavior on a flight. So right now, a no list only exists for preventing terrorism. The FAA says last year was the worst on record for rowdy passengers. Driving the increase are passengers who became aggressive with flight attendants over mask requirements. Now to the latest in the pandemic, vaccine advisors to the CDC voting just yesterday to support recommending the two dose Moderna COVID vaccine. It received full approval from the FDA earlier this week for use in all adults. More than 200 million doses of Moderna vaccine have been registered already across the country. 
no difference between this fully approved vaccine and the one that was previously available through emergency use. It comes the same day as John Hopkins revealed that more than 900,000 people in the United States have died of COVID since the pandemic began. Well, despite the need for trained workers, enrollment at community colleges is down in the U.S. Pandemic related declines in enrollment, particularly in hands on skilled trades courses, have impacted underfunded schools. From the fall of 2019 through the fall of 2021, enrollment at public two year schools fell, fell nearly 15 percent. While COVID-19 relief money has helped financially strapped community colleges, administrators say those one time funds, well, they're depleted now. Instructors say hands on courses have also suffered because they could not meet in person. Happening tomorrow, Metro Health holding a pop up clinic for those who need to get a vaccine, a booster shot or a flu shot. It'll be at East Central High School's Performing Arts Center. It starts at 11 a.m. It goes to 4 p.m. All three COVID vaccines will be available for eligible children and eligible adults. Kids five years or older can get the Pfizer vaccine. Kids 12 years and older can get the Pfizer booster shot. As for Moderna and Johnson and Johnson vaccines, you have to be 18 years or older. Well, the Winter Olympics is in progress with the Team USA picking up its first medal. The games in Beijing starting to pick up a little steam with the medals beginning to trickle in. ABC's Christine Sloan is keeping tabs on it from New York. There's a new queen of the skies, Zoe sadowski Sinet of New Zealand, with a death-defying final run, giving her the gold medal in women's slope style. She edged out Westport, Connecticut's Julia Marino, who earned silver. Australia's Tess Cody took bronze. In men's moguls, Walter Welberg dominating the event, earning his first Olympic gold. He defeated defending champ Mikhail Kingsbury of Canada. American Nick Page placed fifth. Figure skating mixed team competition, the Americans looking for gold behind Vince Zhou. He had a strong third place performance, helping the team's chances for a medal. No speed, at least not yet. Following a long delay, the start of the men's downhill race has been postponed due to high winds. Organizers say it was in the best interest and safety to racers. Meantime, bobsledder Alana Myers Taylor is out of isolation after testing negative for COVID twice. The three time medalist posted this message to ABC News before she left quarantine. Hi, everyone. All my bags are packed up. And I'm about to get out of here. All right, see you guys back on the ice. Her first ever event will be the first ever women's monobob, February 13th. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And you can keep track of the medal count on KSAT.com. Just click on the Olympic section under the Sports tab. February is American Heart Month, so during this time it is important to better understand, prevent, and treat heart disease. It is the leading cause of death across our country. The CDC says heart disease refers to several types of heart conditions, and you can greatly reduce your risk of heart disease through lifestyle changes. So joining us today, this morning, on Leading Us at 8 a.m., to talk more about heart health, Dr. Don Huey the cardiac surgeon at UT Health San Antonio. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us at 8 a.m. Time now, 639, 29 degrees out. Nothing. I don't know. Yeah. All right, we are talking <laughs> Senior Bowl, some homegrown UTS stars and a Baylor star, a Steel alum, what you need to know. Plus with Valentine's Day coming up, some people may be getting caught up in romance. But scammers are looking to take advantage of that. Coming up after the break, what you should look out for and how you can avoid being a victim. Now let's take a quick live look out there. 29 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Love is in the air as we get closer to Valentine's Day, but don't let rose-colored glasses get the best of you. Local FBI officials are warning of romance scams this time of year, especially with more people working from home and spending more time online. RJ Marquez explains what to look out for and how to avoid becoming a victim. Valentine's Day is a time of love and happiness, but some people are looking to take advantage of a person's affection. According to the FBI, over 23,000 people fell victim to romance scams in 2020. 
With a reported loss of over $605 million, romance scams happen when a criminal takes on a fake online identity to gain a person's trust and uses the illusion of romance to manipulate a victim and steal from them. Scammers may ask the victim to send them money or use their charm to get sensitive bank account information. So the FBI is recommending these tips to avoid becoming a victim of romance scams. First, research the person's picture and profile to see if the image, name, or details have been used anywhere else. Beware of false promises. If the person promises to meet up but then always comes up with an excuse why they can't, that should be a red flag. Be careful of what you post online because scammers can use those details to better understand and target you. Also, if someone tries to isolate you from friends and family, beware. Asking for inappropriate pictures or financial information from you should also be a red flag because they could be used later to extort you. Finally, never send money to anyone you have only communicated with online or by phone. If you suspect an online relationship is a scam, stop all communication right away. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Hey, earlier I asked you after we did that story, what's monobob? It's one person bobsledding. Oh. So, and this is the first time they're going to have it for women, apparently. Interesting. I thought you were going to talk about the actors in the, oh, in the catfishing story. situation. <laughs> uh, pretty frustrated. Uh, yeah, the, the kid in the sweater just looked deflated. Well, he should get an Oscar for that. Yeah. So. All right. Sarah Spivey, 29 degrees out. Very cold. No two ways about it. But, you know, the sun is rising and we'll see the temperatures rise here shortly. Oh, beautiful. All right. A great look out there with the first light of the day. It is cold, though. It's 28 degrees out at the airport uh, and wind chills are in the 20s, low 20s right now. West Northwest winds at about five miles per hour. So when are we not going to be freezing? Well, tomorrow morning uh, we're forecasting a morning low of 36 in San Antonio. There probably will be a light freeze up in the hill country and then we'll see a light freeze on Tuesday morning as well. We're going to have chilly mornings, but a significant improvement for what we're dealing out there right now and by by the way, the average last freeze for San Antonio is during the last week of February. Up in the hill country, though, it's during the last week of March. And we have had later freezes. San Antonio's latest freeze was on April 3rd back in 1987. All right. Elsewhere, we're seeing 24 in Kerrville, 23 in Hondo, 28 in Rock Springs, 27 in Uvalde. And while it is cold and frosty out there this morning, these temperatures are about five degrees warmer than what we were seeing yesterday morning. So a slight improvement from yesterday morning. And you can really notice the difference when you look at the state of Texas as a whole. Uh, yesterday in Amarillo and Lubbock, temperatures were in the teens and now they're closer to 30 degrees. So Texas starting to thaw out from last week's ice and cold weather event. Uh, but really, it's going to be a sunny day all across the state of Texas for us. Quiet across the state of Texas. There is a high pressure system to our east. That's going to allow for our winds to be from the southeast today at about five miles per hour. And there is a cold front to our north. But before you get anxious about cold weather, this is going to be a weak cold front. It's really only going to allow for our winds to get breezy by tomorrow morning. So let me take you through the future cast today. All sunshine for us and highs close to 60 degrees. So pretty impressive to see a warm up from in the 20s to near 60 degrees this afternoon, all because of the sun and the drier air. And then that front is going to move through late tonight. Notice that there is a chance for rain, but it is all the way south toward the Rio Grande Valley as that front moves through. No rain for us here in San Antonio. And again, really the only big thing that you'll notice is that it'll be breezy tomorrow with gusts up to about 25 miles per hour and winds from the north uh, during the day tomorrow. Okay, looking ahead to today's forecast, we'll be uh, already in the 40s by 10, so quite a significant warm up even in the next couple of hours. And then in the 50s by noon, a high temperature close to 60 degrees this afternoon, and it'll get chilly tonight. Temperatures falling to the low 40s by midnight, but again, we're anticipating um, above freezing temperatures tomorrow morning, but just barely so. It'll be 34 in New Braunfels, 36 in San Antonio. If you do live in the hill country, though, Kerrville, Rock Springs, or even out to the west toward Uvalde, another freezing night for you. Temperatures falling into the upper 20s, but again, a significant improvement from the low 20s that you're seeing out there right now. Looking ahead. No rain in the forecast, unfortunately for us. We're not going to be seeing a chance for rain over the next seven days, but we will be seeing a gradual warm up. Temperatures will climb back into the upper 60s by Wednesday. That's average for this time of year. We'll have chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. Hey, near 70 on Friday and Saturday. That's a good looking forecast. Just wish you could have a little bit more rain, Max and Sarah.
All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 29 degrees out. All right, coming up next, we got some college basketball. Yes, we do. <laughs> UT making a statement last night. We're going to have the highlights. All right. Pick three, zero, five, one, fireball one, daily four, five, nine, one, seven, fireball five. And take a look, cash five, 10, 11, 13, 26, 35, Lotto, Texas, five, 16, 30, 47, 49, 51. Here we go, did you play? I didn't. Okay, do you know what it's at? I think it's 131. Woo! It's up there, 100 something. All right, good luck out there. Here are the numbers, Powerball five, 16, 27, 39, 61. Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. A college hoops, the 23rd ranked Texas Longhorns, hosting the number 20 Iowa State yesterday afternoon. And I'll tell you what, those rankings, well, they played out a little differently. This one, a tight battle in the second half until Texas opened up the floodgates from distance. Trey Mitchell, straightaway three, banking it in. Eight point lead a little later, kick out to Andrew Jones. That is a corner three. Three straight threes, making it 47-36. Texas up. Christian Bishop added the exclamation point to an 11-0 run. Two-handed jam. Longhorns get the big W, 63-41. to Heading elsewhere in the Big 12, and number 14, Texas Tech taking on West Virginia. Late second half, Red Raiders nursing a five-point lead. Kevin McCuller pushing the pace. Daniel Bacho jam. A great cap to a hard fought win. Tech takes the win 60 to 53. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law. Firm. Here we go. These guys aren't pros yet, but they could be one day. 2 1 0. Oh. That's right. San Antonio well represented in yesterday afternoon's Senior Bowl. A pair of UTSA Roadrunners making history. Cornerback Tariq Woolen and offensive lineman Spencer Bureford. Becoming the second and third players to represent UTSA at the Senior Bowl, meaning this is the first Senior Bowl ever to have multiple UTSA Roadrunners on the roster. Uh, their American team trailed the national team late in the fourth quarter. Baylor safety JT Woods called game getting the pick. Great way to cap an incredible season for the Steel alum. National team won 20 to 10. And don't worry, if you want to watch more football today, we got you. Pro Bowl taking place. It's going to be at the Allegiant Stadium in Vegas, 2 p.m. And then, of course, next weekend is the Super Bowl. But Super don't, Bowl! <laughs> don't forget to tune in to It's a Replay tonight. Sports guys will have you covered on all these games. So much more. And, of course, they're going to be talking Spurs. Tune in 11 p.m. right after the night beat. What you are you doing for the Super Bowl? I don't know, but uh, I'm definitely going to be watching. Yeah. You might get paid, uh, what was it? Twenty-two or two thousand and twenty-two dollars. There you go. I like looking for details. That's true. Time now, six fifty-four, twenty-eight degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the world waiting on Russia's next move as tensions escalate over Ukraine. ABC News learning Russia has 70 percent of its combat forces in place, including more than 100,000 Russian troops around Ukraine's border. But U.S. intelligence suggesting Vladimir Putin has not yet made an official decision to invade. Our team has the latest from Kiev this morning. Plus the big announcement from Queen Elizabeth, Her Majesty's blessing to the Duchess of Cornwall as she makes her wishes clear for the future of the monarchy, all on the historic weekend that marks the 70th anniversary of her taking the throne. And Team USA winning its first medal overnight in the 2022 Winter Olympics. What to expect in the following games amid COVID protocols? It's all ahead here on GMA. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Four suspects are waking up behind bars this morning. We've learned this shooting taking place just west of downtown. It was just before 1 a.m. The party the four suspects were at wasn't over, but they had to go, according to police. The four women were kicked out, and apparently they weren't happy about that. San Antonio police say the women were at a party on West Salinas. That's just west of downtown near Commerce Street and I-10. It's unclear exactly why they were kicked out, but they certainly let everyone know the night was not over. The four women got into a car and shot several rounds off into the air and sped away from the scene. Just moments after that, they were teased boned by an SUV that was driving on North Colorado. Their car took down a stop sign and then went head
head on into a tree. Not exactly the ending I'm sure they had planned, but it certainly was quite a night for these women. Only the driver was taken to the hospital. She's in stable condition. The two people in the other SUV were not hurt. All four women were taken into custody and are said to be facing multiple charges. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Frosty out there this morning, 27 degrees in San Antonio, 24 in Kerrville, 26 in New Braunfels, 24 in Hondo, 28 in Yavaldi. But just a couple hours from now, we're going to already be in the 40s because we have complete sunshine in the forecast today. Sunny at noon, 53, near 60 for the afternoon high. And looking ahead, nothing but sunshine this week, really. Honestly, we'll be a little more breezy tomorrow in the morning. We're not expecting a freeze early tomorrow morning. Light freeze Tuesday. And again, total sunshine. We'll be near 70 by Friday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. we got a lot more to come. We're going to have an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A ladies' night gets out of hand when the night ends with gunfire and a collision. The details straight ahead. Yeah, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. We are still in the 20s. The sun is out, so when is the heat going to turn on? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, February 6th. All right, so yesterday we saw the heat rise up throughout the progression of the show. Yeah, it was nice yesterday afternoon. This morning, though, we're still in the 20s. I don't know. I, someone needs to turn the heater on. Like, well, guys, just, I mean, the sun just <laughs> came out. OK, <laughs> give it a break. <laughs> give it a couple of minutes because it's quickly going to warm Spivey, up here. Sarah Spivey, defender of the sun. I am. <laughs> I'm going to defend it because it's going to be nice and close to 60 degrees this afternoon after this cold start out there. Yeah, it is cold at, uh, outside right now. It's 29 degrees. We've got a wind from the west northwest at five, so it feels like it's 24. Elsewhere, it's 22 in Holotus, 28 at JBSA Randolph, 28 in New Braunfels. But it is just above freezing in Divine, 23 in Kerrville, 24 in Bandera, and 27 at Bernie Stage Airfield. Again, don't doubt the forecast. The sun is out, and it's going to be warm soon. In the afternoon, it'll be pleasant near uh, 60 degrees. But first, we got to get through the morning. It'll be chilly this morning. We'll be in the 40s by 10, 50s by noon, 60 degrees for the high temperature. Hey, coming up in the forecast, we're actually going to do an analysis of how this past week's ice event compares to February 2021's uh, winter storm. You're going to want to stick around for that. And of course, I'll have a look at your forecast. A lot of sun in the next seven days. Max. Thank you, Sarah. In your top stories, a night out goes from bad to worse for a group of women. Police say it all started to take a turn for the worst after the group was thrown out of a party. It's what happened as they were leaving that now has them facing charges. Our Jonathan Cotto is live on the city's west side with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. We're right here where it all happened. Police telling us those four women were just planning a Saturday night and it ended, well, not exactly the way it wanted to. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like overnight. It happened just before one o'clock this morning. The party they were at wasn't over, but they had to go. And according to police, they were kicked out. And apparently they weren't happy about that. San Antonio police say the women were at a party on West Salinas here on the west side. That's just uh, west of downtown near Commerce Street and I-10. It's still unclear exactly why they were kicked out, but they certainly let everyone know the night was not over. Now, the four women got into a car and several shots, uh, shot several shots into the air and sped away from the scene. Just moments after that, they were T-boned right here where I'm standing here on the corner of West Salinas, and uh, this is where it all happened. I did have an opportunity to speak with neighbors who say they heard four gunshots go off, and then they heard the crash, the crash, uh, that car uh, impacting this tree right here, going head on with this tree after they were T-boned by an SUV. We have learned that the two uh, people inside that SUV were not hurt. They are expected to be okay. Only the driver, only the driver out of the four women was taken to Bamsey. She's also expected to be okay. 
okay, but right now uh, all have been taken into custody. They are pending multiple charges, but I just want to reiterate, folks here say this isn't the first time this has happened. Just uh, a couple times, they highlighted a couple times last year, uh, drunk drivers have gone through the house right there to the right, and they say this tree right here has saved this home multiple times from being destroyed by drunk drivers who have just gone over the curve and into this property right here. But again, this case remains under investigation. And again, those four women, they're in custody this morning. And again, they're pending multiple charges. Reporting from the west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, a man in the hospital after police tell us he was shot two times while fixing a flat tire. All of this unfolding on the east side. This happened just after three this morning outside of Circle K on South Cross and WW White. Our police on the scene telling us a man was with a woman as he was fixing the tire. The woman's ex-boyfriend apparently walked up and police say started shooting. Now, the victim was shot in the leg and the foot. He was taken to the hospital. Police say the suspect took off in a beige colored vehicle. Now, officers questioned the woman. Police still investigating at last check. No arrests have been made. Well, new information has been released in a deadly shooting during a child custody exchange. The name of the father killed has now been released. He has been identified as 20 year old Lazar Brown Dunnigan. Police say he was dropping off his child to the mother during that drop off. Police say they that he and the mother's new boyfriend allegedly got into an argument when things escalated. The boyfriend is accused of shooting and killing Dunnigan. Police are still looking for that suspect. All right, we are still in the fight against COVID. So happening tomorrow, Metro Health scheduled a pop-up clinic for anyone to get their COVID vaccine, their booster shot, or just a flu shot. It'll be held at East Central's High School's Performing Arts Center. It starts at 11 a.m. It goes till 4 p.m. All three COVID vaccines are available for eligible children and eligible adults. Kids five and older can get the Pfizer vaccine. Kids 12 and older can get the Pfizer booster shot. As for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines, you have to be at least 18 years old. All right, February is American Heart Month, so during this time, it is important to better understand, prevent, and treat heart disease. Heart disease, the leading cause of death across our country, and the CDC says heart disease refers to several types of heart conditions. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Don Way, cardiac surgeon at UT Health San Antonio. Dr. Way, thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Thank you for having me. First and foremost, what is heart disease and who does it affect? Uh, well, as you said, the first thing to know about heart disease is that it is the leading cause of death in the United States, and that's true for both men and women. Um, heart disease is a general term for any condition that affects the function or the structure of the heart, and most people are familiar with the most common type of heart disease, coronary heart disease, which is what causes heart attacks. People who are more prone to have heart disease are those who have diabetes, high blood pressure, who have used tobacco, or who have a strong family history of heart disease, but we know that heart disease can affect people that don't have any of those risk factors. So Dr. Wei, as a physician, what effects have you seen on people's heart health during the pandemic when it comes to lifestyle choices and staying active? That's a very timely question. Uh, what we've seen in the last two years is that pandemic-related changes in lifestyle have caused many of us to become more sedentary, myself included. Uh, activities like meetings, classes, interviews like this that used to be in person are now online. So people are sitting still for much longer and being less active. And because of social distancing, our hobbies have shifted from more active social events to sedentary activities like watching television or having virtual get togethers. We know that 80% of cardiovascular deaths are preventable with changes in lifestyle and physical activity is one of the most powerful ways that we can do that. All right, so speaking of physical activity, what are some recommendations for people trying to get back on track before it's too late? Yes, uh, not only is physical activity important for heart health, it has really strong positive effects for mental health, which is so important uh, during this pandemic. Um, we recommend at least 30 minutes of moderate activity daily and getting uh, physical doesn't require a gym. There are many creative ways to use your environment, uh, such as using the stairs in your building, walking in your neighborhood. Uh, San Antonio has a great system of parks and greenway trails. And with cold weather, indoors you can walk or run in place or do jumping jacks. Uh, you know, if you have children or grandchildren playing tag or dancing to music with them are great family activities. And it's a great way to help set those habits early for the little ones. 
Okay, so what are some warning signs of heart disease and um, you know, what test we need to get done? For example, like what age should you start getting um, your cholesterol levels checked? Uh, good, good questions. Uh, most people know the chest pain as a warning sign of a possible heart attack, but actually I think more common, especially in this region, are more subtle signs of heart disease. And these include feeling uh, short of breath, either with activity or with laying down, uh, feeling tired with daily activity, uh, swelling in the legs or ankles, and sometimes heart disease can mimic other conditions uh, like heartburn or asthma. So if you're being treated for those conditions but continue to have symptoms, it's important to have uh, your doctor rule out heart disease. Um, these days through technology, we have more and more medical tests and, and many of them are non-invasive. Um, a stress test uh, is a good way to pick up, but it's not always, uh, doesn't always detect heart disease. Uh, there are guidelines for having cholesterol checked usually at the age of 40 is when you begin screening. But again, if you have a very strong family history or certain risk factors, uh, it may be important to get those checked earlier. And you know, talking to your doctor is the best way to get answers to those questions. I'm glad you brought up family history because you know it can be in your family history. So anyone can get heart disease, right? It's not just someone who's overweight or you know has been sedentary for a long time. That's right. Uh, unfortunately, we, we've, there's been a lot of you know, scientific breakthroughs and understanding of these things. But I, I tell my patients, you know, you could do everything right. You could eat a healthy diet, be active, have no family history, never smoke. And for some reason, people that fit that profile still have heart disease. So it's always important to continue to get those tests and checkups. Dr. Wei, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Time now is 8:10, 29 degrees out. All right, Max, what's the Senior Bowl? All right, so the Senior Bowl is some of the best college athletes, college football players from across the country coming together, playing in a goal or in a game, and the goal is to really show off your talent before the draft, before the combine. We had two UTSA players in this year's Senior Bowl. We're going to highlight them and show you what you may have missed. All right, and later on GMSA, some elementary kids get into a food fight with administrators, oh. and the kids win. It's not what you think. That's coming up. Plus, if you're looking to buy a new or used vehicle, it's going to cost you more than you think. We've been talking about this for a while. How long will these price hikes last? 29 degrees out there. Now, early this morning when I left my house, I did have some frost on my grass. Uh, Sarah Spivey says the sun is out. Give it some time. <laughs> Let's be patient with it. She'll explain when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. So we are one month into the new year, and prices on both new and old vehicles, they are not going down. Yeah, it's hard to get a car right now, and experts predict those prices could stick around for much of 2022. And today's Consumer Watch, what's driving up the cost, and how soon could buyers catch a break? A shortage of parts, limited production, and surging demand for both new and used cars. It's all driving consumers to pay record sky-high prices for those few cars that dealerships have available. Driving that is some of the shift toward trucks and SUVs and higher contented vehicles. But at the same time, because of this lack of inventory, dealers are not required to discount at all. According to J.D. Power, the average transaction price for a new car was over $45,000 last December. That's up 29% from 2019. And according to Edmonds, prices for used cars ended the year with an average price of nearly $30,000. That's up 29% from a year earlier. If you were trying to find a reasonably priced used car, because the car you have is just conked out, it's going to be much difficult. So when can buyers catch a break? Experts say availability could start to increase as production starts to come back online and the supply of car parts improves. It's not just microchips that we're seeing shortages of. We're seeing resin used in paint, we're seeing tire shortages and even wiring harnesses and on and on. J.D. Power forecasts the average wholesale price of used cars could fall about 9% from the fourth quarter of 2021 to the fourth quarter of this year. But that won't get prices to where they were before the pandemic. In 2023, we'll, we'll expect prices to start to come down, but I don't expect to see a return to the old days. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. All right, it's a story we've obviously been talking about for a I while. No, uh, I'm keeping my car hopefully yeah. as long as possible. Yeah, a 2012 Jeep, I'm just going to see how long yes. it can last. Yes, 
Sarah, I know y'all were looking at cars too. Uh, yeah, we have two <laughs> very used vehicles and need two cars, but. Breaking news, we're in the 30s. Hey, we're in the 30s. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought that it would be good to start the forecast by comparing the last ice event that we had last week to a year ago, the epic winter storm of February 2021. Keep in mind that last year we were below freezing during the winter storm for four and a half days, and the official number at the San Antonio airport this last week was 26 hours. As far as frozen precipitation goes, we had crippling ice and snow last year, and around San Antonio, really only some light ice accumulation, a maximum of a quarter inch uh, Thursday morning. Of course, the storm had a higher impact in the hill country and especially out toward Kerrville, but in San Antonio, just some light ice accumulation. And as far as cold goes, back in 2021, we got down to nine degrees with a wind chill of negative eight. This past week, our lowest temperature was 21 degrees with a wind chill of 10 degrees. That's a pretty big difference. You know, that's about a 15 to 20 degree temperature difference. And to put that in contrast for you, that's like if we had a 75 degree day versus a 90 degree day. So quite a bit warmer this past week, although you know it was very, very cold, just not at all like last year's big weather event. Outside right now, temperatures are rising. We're at 23, nine degrees rather, with a wind chill at 24. Uh, you know, that's up from this morning's low. And as you can see, it's already above freezing in Divine. By the time we get to 9 o'clock, we're going to be above freezing in San Antonio. 27 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 22 in Comfort, 26 in Kerrville, and 24 in Bandera. A wider view, it's above freezing in Del Rio right now, but all in all, a cold morning. We got down to about 27 degrees in San Antonio, and that's 15 degrees colder than seasonably average. So a very chilly and frosty morning. But because we're seeing abundant sunshine out there, you can expect an even warmer day than what we dealt with yesterday. Yesterday, we got up to about 52, 53 degrees. Degrees, and today we'll be close to 60 for the afternoon high. It's really going to be gorgeous out there after the morning hours because it is still chilly out there. High temperatures are going to be near 66 in Del Rio, so mid 60s the further west you go. All right, we'll already be at 45 at 10, 53 at noon. 59 for the afternoon high temperature, south winds at 5 miles per hour. After the sun sets tonight at around 615, we're going to quickly see temperatures cool down. We'll be back in the mid 40s by 10 o'clock. OK, so tomorrow morning we do anticipate another cold start. But here's the thing. I think we'll be above freezing in San Antonio. We're forecasting 36 for tomorrow morning's low. And even though there could be a few nooks and crannies around Bear County that touch freezing, we do not anticipate a hard freeze like what we've been dealing with the last few mornings. Up in the hill country, though, temperatures will get down into the 20s. And then smooth sailing this week. We're going to be seeing temperatures climb back to the seasonable average of 66 by Wednesday. And then looking into the weekend, temperatures will actually rebound into the 70s. Now, with the nice weather, it comes at the cost of chances for rain. There's no chance for rain really across a good portion of Texas and really across a good portion of the United States this week. It's going to be a dry week for many folks, including us here in San Antonio. We got some good rain before the ice Wednesday night, uh, but it wasn't enough to really put major drought uh, dent in the drought. Max and Sarah. All right. Look at that, though. Perfect car wash weather. Yeah, oh, great idea. Oh, look Man, at that. Something to do. All right, so Go I take it yesterday you didn't make it to watch David the Senior Bowl. No, but you're going to tell me about it. I am going to tell you about it. I made it yesterday. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was right after work. We had too many tamales here. Shout out to Frank who brought in food. Uh, I fell asleep for a little bit, but San Antonio made its presence known yesterday at the Senior Bowl. Two UTSA Roadrunners making history. Cornerback Tariq Wollin and offensive lineman Spencer Buford became the second and third players to represent UTSA at the Senior Bowl, meaning this is the first ever Senior Bowl to host multiple Roadrunners on the roster. Their American team trailed the national team late in the fourth quarter. That is when Baylor safety JT Woods called the game. He picked off quarterback. Oh, Bailey Zappi. He, Western Kentucky guy. He set a record this year. It was fantastic. But either way, he got picked off. Perfect way for the Steel alum to finish out an incredible national team victory, 20 to 10. And if you have an itch to watch more football, don't worry. We got the Pro Bowl today, 2 p.m. Played at Allegiant Stadium in Vegas at 2 p.m. And there is a few Cowboys on the roster. So there you go. 
Don't forget to tune in. Instant Replay tonight. The Sports Guys will be covering all these games and so much more. Instant Replay, 11 p.m. right after the night beat. And got to talk about my guy, Micah Parsons. Cowboys, he's at you know, the Pro Bowl conglomeration of all the players. He did a race the other day. Okay. And he raced some of the fast guys in the NFL, and he won. He was like clearly, noticeably, yeah, something like that. Noticeably <laughs> the biggest guy in the race, so shout out, Micah. Shout, shout out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good for him. All right, 822, 31 degrees out. All right, you can take their desserts and recess time Ooh. away, but don't take their chocolate milk away. What these kids did to keep it on their school's menu. Good morning, welcome back. Interesting story to tell you about. School administrators at one California school, they had to deal with a student walkout. And the reason, chocolate milk. Don't mess with their chocolate milk. The school district recently made a move to remove the drink from the lunchtime menu because of its high sugar content. This happened at a K through 8 school in Sacramento, California. The news caught students off guard, but they rallied back quick enough and organized a walkout. All right, so with signs in hand, they walked out of class demanding chocolate milk be put back on the menu. A district official says they've come to a compromise with the students. Chocolate milk is coming back to lunchtime, but only for one day every other week. Balance. It's all about balance. It is about balance. You're good for them kids. The kids. I know. Yeah. All right. 826, 31 degrees out. All right. Celebrating the Super Bowl this year, you may want to do a head count before you go to the store because inflation is adding to your party cost. True. And we are live on the west side of neighborhood that just saw a crazy crash overnight. We have the latest. Jonathan Cotto join us live in just a bit. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, February 6th, and ooh, it feels like February 32 degrees. It's 32, though. Throughout the morning, we've been yeah, high we've, 20s. We've been on the 20s, so this Sarah is Sarah Spivey thing. has been telling us, be patient. The sun is out. It's going to yeah. warm up. Give it, it time. Is. That's what the sun does. It warms us up. Meteorology 101 <laughs> this morning. Uh, but yeah, it is still cold out there though right now. Take a look at temperatures around the area. Still below freezing in New Braunfels, 32 in Gonzales, now at 32 in Pleasanton, 25 in Hondo, 26 in Kerrville. Hey, guess what though? We do have a bit of a wind from the north right now. It's not all that strong, only five miles per hour, but it makes it feel like it's 24 in San Antonio, makes it feel like it's 18 in Hondo. So we do have a bit of a wind chill. It's cold out there right now. Bundle up, but by this afternoon, look at the forecast. High temperatures will be near 60 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio and in the mid 60s out west toward Del Rio, mid 50s in the hill country and up that I-35 corridor. All right, so what's up with the weather? That quick warm up today, which I just talked about. Mornings will be chilly, but progressively warmer in the coming days. And we do have a dry forecast. And if you're wondering, hey, when do we usually see the last freeze of the season? I've got an answer to that coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A crash early this morning has four women facing charges and a West Side homeowner in need of some repairs. Jonathan Cotto joining us live on West Salinas on the city's west side with more. Jonathan, what can you tell us? Good morning, Max and Sarah. I'm here located on the city's west side where uh, that accident, that crash took place here, exactly where I'm standing now. It was a night out for four women who uh, didn't exactly anticipate ending the way it did. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like overnight. We know San Antonio police responded to this scene just before one o'clock this morning. They say they were at a party. The party wasn't over, but they had to go, and apparently they weren't happy about that. San Antonio police say the women were at that party on West Salinas. That's west of downtown near Commerce Street and I-10. It's still unclear exactly why they were kicked out, but they certainly let everyone know the night was not over. The four women got into a car and shot several rounds off into the air and sped away from the scene. And just moments after, they were T-boned by an SUV that was driving on North Colorado. That's right here. If we can pull out of that VO, we can show you here a little bit what that damage looked like. Again. Those four women jumped into their car from a home on this street, which is West Salinas, shot several rounds into the air. Neighbors here tell me they heard at least four shots last night um, shortly after. They ran into this home right here, this stop sign. You can just see the amount of damage this home has received. The stop sign completely uprooted from the ground. Now, another interesting fact, Max and Sarah's neighbors here say this isn't the first time something like this has happened on this street. And this tree right here, pretty much being a life-saving barrier for the homeowners right here. They say 
a number of cars have crashed into their property at least uh, twice before this incident uh, overnight. And I also want to show you a little bit of just the amount of debris here. Neighbors say they've never seen the amount of uh, SAPD units that were out here. They say they saw at least eight to 10 San Antonio police units here. And uh, the four women ran all except the driver. And we do know the driver was sent to Bamsey. She's expected to be okay. The two passengers in the SUV that T-boned that car, they are expected to be okay as well. This morning, those four women have been taken into custody and are pending multiple charges. Reporting live from the city's west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. A man on the run accused of taking part in a murder for hire plot in another state has been arrested right here in Texas. According to the FBI, 54 year old Darren Christopher Starr was charged after he turned himself over to authorities in Hondo yesterday morning. Federal officials say law enforcement agencies were looking for Starr after someone shot and killed his former sister in law outside of her home back in November of 2017. In Coffee County, Alabama, right now the sheriff's office from that county is on its way to Texas to take Star into custody and take him back to Alabama. Well, the search continues this morning for the person accused of shooting a man during an argument in Elmendorf yesterday afternoon. So the incident happened outside the Dollar General on New Mathis Road near I-37 and Priest Road. According to the sheriff's office, a 48-year-old man got into an argument with another customer at the Dollar General. They continued to argue as they left the store. Things escalated. The customer pulled out a gun and shot the victim in the stomach. Now that victim taken to Bamsey at last check in serious condition. The suspect took off before deputies got to the scene. At last check, no arrests have been made. Family on the north side woke up yesterday to find out they had been robbed. The Robinson family are competitive go-karters and were preparing to compete this weekend. Instead, a thief got away with four of their racing carts, equipment, and tools the couple uses in their contracting business. The truck itself also used for work. So it brings the money in and uh, feeds the family and allows us to have these other things that now we don't. An SAPD officer wrote a report encouraged the couple to file a claim with their insurance. In total, they estimate their loss to be over $100,000. So if you're trying to figure out your Super Bowl spread, you might be paying more for a lot of items this year. ABC's Deirdre Bolton has some tips that could save you money at the store. You know about World War II, those who fought against Hitler and his Axis alliance. Hey, we got a job. Let's get this done. But you've probably never heard of a battalion of black women raising the morale of millions of servicemen overseas. It was just after D-Day in 1944. Allied troops were rapidly moving through Europe and millions of pieces of undelivered mail for America's armed forces were piling up. We helped each other. We worked with each other. Retired Major Fanny Griffin McClendon of the Women's Army Corps, now 101 years old, was a supervisor in the 6888 Central Postal. Dr All right, technical difficulty there, but we're going to have that story on KSAT.com. So in your national headlines, Queen Elizabeth marking the eve of her platinum jubilee with a special reception, and she issued a request. She wants her daughter-in-law, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, be known as Queen Consort when her son, Charles, succeeds her as king. Queen Elizabeth marked the eve of her platinum jubilee with a special reception. She issued that request. And honestly, this is a big deal. It, um, it is a big deal because... I, I don't want to say she's the oldest, but she is one of the... She is the person she's lasted, I think, 70 years in her position. Well, it's also a big deal because um, of everything that has gone on with the royal family. Right, and this is the first time the queen has publicly addressed her daughter-in-law's role in the future monarchy. She welcomed members of the local community, volunteer groups to her private residence in Norfolk. And look at that, a majestic time. The queen is how old now? 90? 95, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Looks great. Amazing. Time now, 8.38, 32 degrees out. We have some local high school basketball highlights. Yes, some of the best top tier teams and talent in and around our area. We're going to have highlights next. All right. Oh, this is Jeff Bezos' bridge. So they have to reassemble a bridge to get Jeff Bezos' wow. super yacht to get through it. We're going to explain Money. it's just Money a talks, bit. Money talks, Max. <laughs> Money talks. <laughs> 32 degrees at 8.38 this morning. There is that sun. It's beautiful. And Sarah Spivey said it's going to be warming us up later throughout the day. She'll have our full forecast when we come back.
Good morning. Coming up on this week, after that stunning rebuke of Donald Trump by Mike Pence and the RNC censure of two GOP lawmakers, our political panel analyzes the future of the Republican Party. Plus, we travel to Arizona to examine how election integrity has become a central campaign issue in critical midterm races. And as 3,000 U.S. troops deploy to Eastern Europe, we'll speak with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and top House Republican Michael McCall about the standoff between Russia and Ukraine. It's all coming up on This Week. All right, you're going to want to look up and watch this video. A quick acting officer is credited with saving a young girl from being hit by a car, and it was all caught on camera. So this happened in Maryland. So you can see the officer there in orange and the, the child about to cross. So the moment a car right there Whoa. about to drive through the sidewalk, that officer pulling that student to safety and took the brunt of the impact. She only suffered minor injuries. Now the town is working to honor her bravery and swift action. All right, so this is a story we've been talking about through the morning. A big expensive toy for Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. It could force a Dutch town to dismantle their historic bridge. So this is the bridge. This is a video shot by Dutch Yachting. It is a 138-yard ship reportedly owned by Bezos. Yes, 138 yards. The shipbuilder is requesting the city remove the central section of their historic bridge. <laughs> city officials say they have to consider preserving the bridge's structure, the impact to the environment, and the local economy before they approve the permit to completely dismantle their historic bridge. The shipbuilder would also be responsible for paying for the bridge to be dismantled. What does Bezos have to say about any of this? I think he just wants his boat. He just wants yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you have that level of money. I want my boat at all costs. Yeah. But the good thing is that he would be paying for the bridge to go up I and down. I just hope that the bridge isn't, you know, impacted. Well, I mean, it would be dismantled, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Turn to weather, 33, so we're like right at that freezing point. <laughs> yeah, you know, we are starting to get above freezing locally around San Antonio, but temperatures at the top of the hour showed that we were still in the 20s. So we are, the sun is working. It's warming us up for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. We've got complete sunshine right now, and it does feel a little colder than it is outside right now, though, because we do have a light wind from the northwest at about five miles per hour. So it actually feels like it's in the low to mid 20s. Now, something to keep in mind, a lot of people ask me is, is when do we see our last freeze of the season? When can I uh, totally keep my plants outside and be safe? Well, over the coming days, you know, we're going to be seeing a gradual rise in morning lows. Tomorrow morning, I don't anticipate a freeze in San Antonio, but by Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, we could have a light freeze. Uh, but by the weekend, temperatures will be back up into the 40s. Our average last freeze in San Antonio Antonio is February 24th, so toward the end of February. Up in the hill country, it's toward the end of March. Uh, and we have had years where freezes have lasted well into March, and even San Antonio's latest freeze was on April 3rd. Uh, so uh, it is entirely possible for us to have a freeze outside of, of February 24th, but that was all the way back in 1987. Outside right now, it's 29 in San Antonio, 28 in New Braunfels, 29 in Kerrville, but temperatures are on the rise. It's already above freezing in Pleasanton, 33 in Uvalde, 34 in Del Rio, and at the airport right now, it's 33 degrees. So temperatures are indeed warming up. It's cold across the entire state of Texas. You know, a lot of Texas has been on ice. There's been a snowpack in North Texas, but things are improving from yesterday. I mean, yesterday morning, Amarillo was in the teens. Now they're just right near freezing. So things are slowly improving as we get a quiet weather pattern settling over Texas. Nothing but sunshine here for us today. There is a cold front, though, working its way through the panhandle. It's a very weak front, though. We really don't have to worry about a massive drop in temperatures from this. Here's what it's going to do. Uh, we'll be looking at sunshine today and a high temperature really pleasant, close to about 60 degrees this afternoon in the mid 60s out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and even in uh, the mid 50s in, in the hill country. So we are going to warm up nicely today. That front's going to move through. It's not going to bring any rain to San Antonio, but it is going to bring some rain to uh, the Rio Grande Valley. And really, honestly, that front's just going to make it feel a little bit more breezy by tomorrow morning. We'll have winds gusting from the north up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour. So just a subtle change there for 
for us. And subtle changes are the name of the game in the week ahead because it's really going to be quiet with very little chance for rain. All right, today's forecast, as I mentioned, total sunshine will already be in the 40s by 10, so pretty steep increase in temperatures in just like an hour or so. Uh, and then by noon, we'll be at 53, 60 for the high temperature this afternoon, and temperatures will really plummet after sunset. We'll be looking at uh, temperatures in the low 40s by midnight. South winds at five miles per hour. By the start of the morning tomorrow, as I mentioned, I don't anticipate a, an official freeze in San Antonio. We'll probably get down to the mid 30s, but in the nooks and crannies and valleys around Bear County, we definitely could at least be briefly touch freezing. Here's the thing, though. Uh, we're not going to be seeing the hard freezes like what we've been seeing the last couple of mornings. So uh, freeze with temperatures in the 20s possible in the hill country. And then looking ahead, it'll be nice in the week ahead, but very little to no. In fact, no chance for rain over the next seven days. Just sunshine and we'll be back up into the mid to upper 60s by Wednesday, 70s by Friday. Max, Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Look at that, 848, and we are moving up Ooh. on the thermometer. But you know what time it is? What time is it? It's time to talk sports. Let's see what we got. We got some high school hoops to tell you about. Oh, number of huge matchups taking place at Northside Sports Gym yesterday. We're going to start off 11 and 1. Brendan taking on 9 and 4. O'Connor, the Panthers in the lead late in the third. Jalen Munoz kicking out Joshua Moreno. Corner three, that is good. They would lead 46 38, but the Bears roar back. Camden, Cowgill, catch and release from beyond the arc. Knocks down two threes. Brennan cuts the lead down to two, heading into the fourth quarter. Both teams trading buckets. Daniel back out to Muniz, three, and got it. 51 49, a barn burner right here. Kingston Flemings knocking down the pull up jumper. Regulation not enough. Both teams tied at 57, heading to OT. Look at that beautiful drive and finish. He had a game high 27 points and check out the beautiful cross court pass. Jacob Peebles for the dagger three hand in his face. Panthers stunned the Bears 71 63. We were trying to be as physical as we can with them, especially because, you know, we're definitely undersized. We don't really have that many bigs, but I'm proud of the way we fought. Me and the team and the coaches, we all fought on defense hard and we were able to get the stops we needed and then we were able to get the clutch buckets in the end. And, and Free throws, free throws, definitely a key part of the game that helped us win this game. Always about clutch buckets. Panthers back on the court Wednesday night, 7.30, take on Stevens at Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. All right, a lot more action. Tell you about Holmes and Harlan. On to the next one. Huskies jump out to an early lead. Christopher, look at that. Gets a step, drives right to the rim. Scoop in, and that's two points. 5-0 Holmes, but the Hawks, they swoop in. Kalen Hargrove battles his way inside the paint layup. And then boom, beautiful pass. Jay Sibley, pull up jumper, so smooth. Holmes stuns the Hawks, 52-49, grabbing their second district win. We are far from done. Round two between Antonian and Central Catholic at St. Mary's University, as seen on the BGC app, courtesy of Texas Sports Productions. This one's a five point game, fourth quarter, off the miss. Ramirez grabbing the board, puts it back in. That is the Apaches by seven. A few plays later, Xavier Martinez drives, stops, hits for two of his 27. Antonian sweeps the buttons 81 to 67. Look at that. Wow. I love high school and college hoops. Gotta pretty cool. It. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. I wish I could dunk. <laughs> Here we are. 850, 33 degrees out. All right, tomorrow in GMSA, Justin Horn taking us underground oh. to explain why rapid development in the area county has so many worried about Edwards Aquifer. Aquifer, that's tomorrow. That is awesome. Good and story. we are excited this week, KSAT debuting a new live stream program featuring our own Steve Spreeser and Stephania Jimenez. Breakdown is what the new show is called. It's going to give an in-depth look at major issues affecting the people of San Antonio, Bear County, and our surrounding communities. So the first episode is Wednesday, February 9th at 7 p.m. Stephania and Steve look at changes made as a result of last year's winter storm that brought Texas to a standstill. Breakdown will be available on all of KSAT's digital platforms. But for us, we'll be right back. Some news you need to know before you go. A getaway attempt by a group of women goes wrong. Their car is T-boned. One of them ends up in the hospital. Police say four women were kicked out of a house party on West Salinas on the west side before 1 a.m. Officers say as the women got inside the car, someone in the group started shooting into the air. They tried to drive away. Authorities say 
That driver ran through a stop sign at Salinas and North Colorado. That vehicle was T-boned by an SUV. The impact of the crash sent the woman's car into a tree. Two people in the SUV were checked out by EMS. The driver of the vehicle taken to the hospital in stable condition. All four women they were taken into custody. Charges are now pending. The sun is working. We're at 36 degrees here. Ooh. That's up from our morning low of 27. Temperatures are rising and we're going to see nothing but sunshine today. So expect temperatures to be near 60 degrees this afternoon for the high. And then looking ahead, we'll be getting back up to near 70 degrees by the week's end. No chance for rain over the next seven days, unfortunately. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. It's funny when 36 is really warm. Yeah. Have a great day. Have a good Sunday.